First of all, uh, Father Abbott is fine. Is this, I guess he's semi-retiring from this trip because it takes so much out of him and it always takes him a day or so to recover. But he sends his love and his regards and he hasn't forgotten you and he won't. I'm sure he'll come once in a while. And on that subject, I ask your patience and charity because now when there's only one priest coming down here, the confessions will usually make mass later than like it used to be. I know the last few years you had the luxury of two priests and mass starting on time, but we'll have to get used to the old way and simply practice charity and, and practice patience. Because if you are practicing charity and patience toward those in the confession line, they're doing the same with you when you're in the confessional line. Also, after the sermon, we will all kneel and recite the Assassination Creed. And I think there's still extra copies of the bulletin in the back. It'll be on the back of the second page of the bulletin. Also, next Sunday, there'll be no Mass in Birmingham. It's Corpus Christi Sunday, where we have the procession and the benediction up at the Abbey Church. And anybody who can make it is more than welcome. And I urge anybody who is actually involved in the ceremony to please arrive early, if at all possible, to receive uh, instruction of what to do. And I encourage you as always to read all our bulletins from cover to cover. Sometimes they're mostly pictures, but even the pictures can tell you a lot. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost, Amen. These last few days up at the monastery, we've been doing some spring cleaning in a big way. We've been using a power washer to clean all the crud and the soot and the blackness off our sidewalks and the buildings and everything. And it does an amazing job. It simply uses water under high pressure to get rid of the faults and the dirtiness that turns everything black and gloomy. There is an object lesson in this, two of them actually. The first one is that if someone didn't use that pressure washer on that sidewalk to clean it, it would always remain dirty. And yet the sidewalk does not complain. Of course it can't. And we should be just like that sidewalk. When God uses the pressure washer on us to clean the dirtiness off of us, of course it's gonna hurt. All you have to do is watch that pressure washer. And if you leave it there long enough, it actually starts removing some of the original surface. And you know that got to hurt. And it does hurt when God does it to us. But how else can we become clean? Because the dirtiness clings to us so hard and so firmly and sometimes we cling to it, to our faults and our failings, that God has to use a lot of pressure to pry us apart. So let us not complain when he uses that pressure to make us more like him. Let us thank him instead. And the second object lesson is for anybody who's in a position of authority or power, whether it's parent 
or a teacher or a boss and that is when you have to use a pressure washer to correct a fault or to get rid of some dirtiness or whatever remember that it is an abrasive process and that when you hold it in one place too long it does remove some of the original surface and it can cause quite a bit of damage so in our dealing with others let us remember that that while we ourselves when we are corrected how well or unwell we take correction how well or unwell we take the pressure washer let us apply it to our neighbor the same way we would have it applied to ourselves as gently as possible still using just enough pressure to clean the surface without causing any bleeding wounds I also forgot to mention that on the back table are these little palm crosses they have three blessings and I ask you all to take them and use them as you know how as sacramentals take them all help yourselves place them around the house or wrap them in pieces of tinfoil and bury, bury them around your property I will give you my blessing and then we will all kneel and recite together the Athanasian Creed and I urge you to say it with every fiber of your heart, with every fiber of love and faith. That doesn't mean we have to understand the Trinity. We don't have to understand exactly what we're saying is true or why it's true. We simply must believe that it is true because God says it's true. Now please kneel and I will give you first my blessing. May the blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, descend upon you and remain upon you forever and ever. Amen. Now let us all recite the affirmation of Jesus. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Whosoever will be saved before all things, it is necessary that he hold the Catholic faith, which faith accepts everyone to be whole and undefiled. Without doubt, he shall perish everlastingly. And the Catholic faith is this, that we worship one God in Trinity, and Trinity in unity. Neither confounding the persons, nor dividing the substance, for there is one person of the Father, another of the Son, and another of the Holy Ghost. But the Godhead of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost is all one. The glory equal the majesty go eternal. Such as a father is, such is the son, and such is the Holy Ghost. The Father uncreated, the Son uncreated, and the Holy Ghost uncreated. The Father incomprehensible, the Son incomprehensible, and the Holy Ghost incomprehensible. The Father eternal, the Son eternal, and the Holy Ghost eternal. And yet they are not three eternal, but one eternal. And also there are not three incomprehensible, nor three uncreated, but one uncreated, and one incomprehensible. So likewise the Father is Almighty, the Son Almighty, and the Holy Ghost Almighty. And yet they are not three Almighty, but one Almighty. So the Father is God, the Son is God, and the Holy Ghost.
Holy Ghost is God. And yet they are not three gods, but one God. So likewise the Father is Lord, the Son is Lord, and the Holy Ghost is Lord. And yet not three Lords, but one Lord. For like as we are compelled by the Christian truth to acknowledge every person by himself to be God and Lord, so are we forbidden by the Catholic religion to say, There be three gods, or three lords. The Father is made of none, neither created nor begotten. The Son is of the Father alone, not made nor created, but begotten. The Holy Ghost is of the Father and of the Son, neither made nor created, nor begotten, but also you. So there is one Father, not three fathers, one Son, not three sons, one Holy Ghost, not three Holy Ghosts. And in this Trinity, none is before or after others, none is greater or less than another. But the whole three persons are holy eternal, together and holy Lord, so that in all things, as is that war said, the unity in Trinity and the Trinity in unity is to be worshipped. He therefore that will be saved by thus think of the Trinity. Furthermore, it is necessary to everlasting salvation that he also believe rightly the incarnation of our Lord Jesus Christ. For the right faith is that we believe and confess that our Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God, is God and man, God of the substance of the Father, begotten before the world, and man of the substance of his father, born in the world, perfect God and perfect man, of a reasonable soul and human flesh subsisting, equal to the Father as touching his Godhead, and inferior to the Father as touching his manhood, who although he be God and man, yet he is not you but one Christ. One, not by conversion of the Godhead into your flesh, but by taking of the manhood unto God. One altogether, not by confusion of substance, but by unity of person. For as the reasonable soul and flesh is one man, so God and man is one Christ who suffered for our salvation, submitted into hell, rose again the third day from the dead, he has been in the heaven, he sitteth on the right hand of the Father, God Almighty, from whence he shall come, to judge the quick and the dead, at whose coming all men shall rise again with their bodies, and shall give account for their own works, and they that have done good shall go into life everlasting, and they that have done evil into everlasting fire. This is a Catholic faith, which except a man believe faithfully, he cannot be saved. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost.